William Shakespeare wrote a tragedy called Othello, a story about a successful black man brought down by his malicious ensign Iago. Othello is notable for being a prime example of people of color not only existing in past European society, but also succeeding. Because the writer is kind of a big deal, Othello has been studied for decades. Scholarship in academia usually center around the play's primary themes of jealousy and race, or around the characters Othello and Iago. But when I had to study this friggin' play in high school, I couldn't care less about Othello or his fits of rage. I was more preoccupied by how dirty they did Desmond. I can't even say her name. I was more preoccupied by how dirty they did Desdemona. Motherfucker really killed his wife after she denounced her father, married him, and moved out of her home country for him. Needless to say, I was livid, and no one, not even my own English teacher, seemed to care about her. But I did. In their defense, Othello and Iago were written as complex individuals, while their wives, Desdemona and Amelia, weren't as lucky. There wasn't much there to work with as a classroom of high school students. But what makes a character complex anyway? What makes them such significant figures? What is it about them that resonates with us, that we come back to them time and time again? It's because they don't just have stories, they have lives. They feel like actual human beings when you read them. But women like Desdemona and Amelia are often not as fully developed in fiction as the men are. Therefore, by comparison, they are not given the same opportunity to be completely human. So, what happens to the women who aren't written in depth? What happens to women with easily forgotten paper-thin personalities, who are lost in the fringes of the plot, who exit the stage once their part is done? What are their roles, not just in the story, but in society? With so little screen time, it's hard to imagine how they could possibly affect the world. But the absence of something can often have the same effect as the presence of something. A lesbian comic artist named Alison Bechdel created three basic rules to indicate the active presence of women in forms of fiction. These rules are called the Bechdel test. The test says that 1. It has to have at least two women in it who 2. Talk to each other about 3. Anything besides a man. It is such a simple test that it almost seems dumb. But honestly, you would be surprised at how many films and novels fail all because their female characters can't seem to find anything else to talk about other than a man. Othello technically passes the Bechtel test. We owe it all to, that's right, Desdemona, who divulges this small memory to her handmaiden Amelia. My mother had a maid called Barbara. She was in love, and he she loved proved mad and did forsake her. She had a song of Willow, an old thing it was, but it expressed her fortune and she died singing it. That song tonight will not go from my mind. I have much to do but to go hang my head all at one side and sing it like poor Barbara. Prithee, dispatch. It's a tender moment, this unexpected glimpse of Desdemona's previous life. Not only is it a warning of what's to come, but it's a gentle reminder that she did have a life before Othello, that she existed before they met. The Bechtel test has its problems, as most things do but it strives to explore the depth and detail in which women are written in, as well as the number of women in a story, and the dimensions of their lives so that it doesn't just revolve around the leading man. I wonder about the endless experiences that these fictional women have, don't you? Imagine the insight we could have received from these characters had more writers decided to develop them further, to make them more human. But what does it mean to be human anyway? Elizabeth Bennet, Daenerys Targaryen, and Hermione Grangers are prominent female characters, and they're popular because of the way they were written. They had their own principles, and they had likable traits. I, for example, liked Elizabeth because she was feisty. Daenerys was fearless. Hermione was clever. Most importantly though, they had flaws. Elizabeth Bennet was also judgmental, stubborn, and let her prejudice get the best of her. Daenerys Targaryen tried to force her black and white views on the world without realizing the shades of complication in between. And, for someone who was supposedly bright, Hermione Granger in the novels was low-key close-minded. It's these negative traits that balance out their positive traits. None of these characters are inherently good or bad. The more complicated the character, 
the more well-rounded they seem. And having flaws just means you're a human being. However, women like Desdemona aren't given flaws as often as men are. In fact, we end up knowing very little of her and Amelia. How can we connect with a character who, even by the end of the story, remains a stranger to us, despite being important to the plot? I mean, the reasons why we focus on Iago and Othello is because, well, we see the most of them in the play. They're also the most well-developed. Iago is an incredibly malevolent prick, and it baffles us how someone could be that cruel. Othello, on the other hand, went 0 to 100 real quick, and his rapid descent to madness is fascinating to watch. All these magnetic qualities draw us in because they're also interesting. They're different. They're exciting. Desdemona isn't exciting. She is, quote, a most exquisite lady, tender, fair, and happy. So blessed a disposition, oh, the world hath not a sweeter creature. But she's still not exciting. For lack of a better phrase, she's too perfect. She's like the cardboard cutout for every doe eyed innocent soul that gets killed for the shock factor. Her personality isn't as fleshed out as the other male characters. She doesn't extend beyond the paper like they do, nor does she resonate with us as much. Rather than living, she merely exists within the story. Everything else happens around her. Granted, there is a reason why the play is called Othello and not Desdemona. The play wasn't about her, but it could have been. What would the story have been like told through her eyes, where the husband that she loved so dearly that she had forsaken everything to be with him suddenly transformed into this terrible beast right before her very eyes? What if she did something other than exist? The story certainly would have been more interesting if Desdemona wasn't so passive, if she made grander mistakes. I mean, we all make mistakes. When a woman sins, it's not any different to when a man sins, right? Regardless of gender, if we make a mistake, we hurt people, in the same way that if we do good deeds, we make people happy. Men and women are not that different from each other. We are all equipped with the same abilities and the same appetite for life. Let husbands know their wives have sense like them. They see and smell and have their palates both for sweet and sour as husbands have. What is it that they do when they change us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. Is frailty that thus errs? It is so, too. And have not we affections, desires for sport and frailty as men have? Both genders have the same capacity to be multifaceted. Women can be as cruel and manipulative as men are. Women can be proud and prejudiced, ruthless, selfish, entitled, indecisive. We are so incredibly flawed, and that's the beauty of being human. We can't blame fictional characters for the way they were written. We have no power to do so, but we do have the power to change the narrative, to write better women. When I say better women, I don't mean write women who win at the first try, who always knows what to do, who never breaks down. Instead, write about women who mess up but never surrender, or women who try and may never actually succeed. Abusive women who we can never forgive, women who commit crimes but who we end up liking anyway. Reckless women who are careless with other people's well-being, women who are reckless with themselves but never with anyone else, who cheat their way to the top, who will do anything it takes to survive. Give women their own dangers to pass, in short, make them believable. Give us a reason not to just love and admire, but to hate, to pity, to fear, and to relate to women. Most characters in stories are not given the luxury of being well-developed. And that's fair enough, since not every novel can tell every minor character's sob story. Not every story is worth telling. But we have to at least acknowledge that there is an imbalance of female presences in fiction. Just like wages and rights, the depth and detail in which fictional men and women are written in should be equal. We are all human beings, and being human means being flawed because, as Hannah Montana once said, nobody's perfect. 
In stories, we all deserve to be represented as who we are, the good and the bad inside us. After all, fiction is just a documentation of what it means to be human in the world that we live in. I'd rather it stick to the truth as close as possible.